<laughs> well, I'm just going to, because we were five minutes in already, just want to get started. But it was nice to talk to everyone from the new year. Um, so uh, welcome to uh, welcome to our glossary meeting. Uh, let me just share uh, our very first of this year. Uh, let me share on the screen. Oh, let me add uh, the link again for those who should join later. Add your names, please. Uh, and as usual, as you know, this is a CNCF meeting, so please attach code, code of content and basically just be respectful and kind, very easy. Uh, okay, let's start with uh, the glossary updates. Uh, so the Portuguese blog will go live on January 12th. Very exciting. Took a little while, but I think it turned out really well and looking forward to seeing it live. Um, you may or may not have seen it, but we've updated tags and deprec deprecated some definitions. There's a link to a sheet which might make it easier where you can see the whole, I don't know, I just put it there, may or not, may, may or may not be easier. And uh, you will also see like updates in uh, the style guide. Uh, so, oh no, this is not supposed to be this one. Ugh. Oh, I tap, I... Okay, well, anyways, in the style guide, there is a, let me just do this real quick. In the style guide, there's like an update where you can see um, what tags we're using. So we're trying to be, um, we're, we're, we have very specific tags. Uh, and here you see like how we use them. Uh, we're trying to be, to minimize them. So it's not like, so it's it's meaningful. These are the ones that we have. If uh, anyone at some point feels that there should be a new one, don't just add a new one. Please reach out to maintainers and uh, make sure that it is a tag that we should be using. Um, and then uh, also kind of a little mention, because we talked about this before, but like a little bit of our approach, the minimal viable definition, which kind of means uh, helps for people who are uh, contributing with new terms. Uh, basically, we, we really are trying to provide a high level overview just enough so people can dig deeper right we don't want to overcomplicate things the, the, the goal is really to make it accessible to anyone and the basis to then uh, kind of go on and learn more about cloud native so those two sections are new um and um yeah so for the maintainer kind of discussion um Policy as code, uh, Jihoon, I saw that you said something about wrap along lines and markdown count plus semantic line breaks. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Yeah, I guess that was the discussion uh, about when to <clears throat> wrap a line that was at 1PR where I said, uh, where mm -hmm. I made some suggestions um, to wrap uh, the yeah. longer lines to smaller ones and then the discussion went off and uh, yeah yeah i'm not really sure what ramp along markdown line a uh, markdown code aren't we doing markdown yeah 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 it's 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 markdown but um <clears throat> i guess it's uh, just about what do we what do we understand um or, or what do we consider uh, semantic line breaks mm -hmm. Um, do we really break only at the uh, exclamation mark or do we break even when there's no sign at all or what do we do? I mm -hmm. guess that's basically the question yeah. um, we should answer. I think for editing purposes, because like when you edit the beginning of a sentence, often the, the end changes too, right? So it's like things move around because it's not like, sometimes it's just like if, you, if it's just like a, a uh, letter missing or so no but like if you're editing a, a sentence then it impacts the entire sentence from the beginning until so that's why I was thinking I know that sometimes they're very long but at least for editing purposes I find it easier to have them complete yeah I guess that's just a, a matter of um of what you are used to or uh, or what yeah I mean for, for me, it's exactly the other way around. So I, I like it if, if it's smaller, um, send uh, smaller things to edit. But yeah, I'm, as I said in the pull request, I'm open. I have no strong opinion to it. Uh, as far um, the important thing is that we have a conclusion. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking like when when you do a suggestion, you know, like when there is a suggestion and then like you can do the whole sentence. Um, and otherwise you would have to have half a sentence here and the other half a sentence there and then like a little bit there. But you could also do a suggestion for the first part of the sentence, put the full sentence there and then the other suggestions just stroke, stroke it out and then like break it down above or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean both both ways are totally yeah. Um, yeah. valid. Yeah. Um, okay, I think other than, other than that, it's pretty much ready, right? Um, to merge. Um, uh, and then for, do we have anything specific before we go more into these kind of things that uh, is more for the localized team SOCO stuff that you made that's more interesting before we go more in maintainer specific stuff? Uh, sure. Yeah, the uh, next one. Mm. So regarding the localization branches, uh, there are many changes in uh, main branch. So uh, I think all localization branches need to be updated. There are some major changes such as tags, uh, tags and there are duplicated terms and uh, we apply the new workflow for labeling, auto labeling. So those uh, should be applied to uh, development branch as well for localization. And uh, for instance, uh, if, you, if you localization team does not uh, check the uh, duplicated status term, then uh, they can uh, possibly they, they possibly translate or localize uh, duplicate or re will remove the terms. It is uh, useless <laughs> uh, effort soon. So uh, I'd like to recommend to update or development branches. So uh, I think all uh, localization teams know how to uh, rebase uh, their development branch with main. You can check the example, the second bullet. And uh, this time uh, I maintainers uh, need to check all localization teams applied uh, updated the uh, development branch according to the latest uh, main branch this time. So I'm going to uh, create a project item uh, to check all branches are updated. So I will share it uh, when I create a project in our repository, I will share it to uh, select channel so that uh, team uh, maintainers can uh, join that project. But uh, recently, uh, Dev ES uh, updated according to, uh, updated their development branch uh, with the latest main branch. So. Uh, uh, protocol team clear this one. But anyway, I'm going to check. Uh, is there any question regarding the update of development branch? Actually, all localization teams should be up, uh, should uh, react for this request. Okay, I, I guess there's no other question. Yeah, anyway, I will handle, handle it. Uh, other maintain, maintainers don't need to worry about. And second one, the last one, last item is about uh, uh, our uh, glossary project. We'll have 
first URL redirection case. Since we are going to change microservices to microservice architecture, the uh, existing microservice URL will be expired and uh, will be expired. So uh, the PR that includes this suggestion changing the name also include URL redirection. Awesome. Procedure. Yeah. Yeah. You can check the link. And so when this PR will yeah, nice. is merged, yeah, this PR merged, then yeah, we will have one redirection. But uh, it is not urgent. But uh, we are we need to consider how to manage the redirections because I see in mm. Kubernetes website you can check the redirection. There are more than five hundred redirections, and they are not quite uh, managed well. Mm. So maybe we also face similar case. So. Uh, we need to have some policy to uh, add redirection or not. So it is just a uh, curing. Yeah, yeah just, yes, a, just a comment on that. Um, the question is, this, this just happened because we renamed the term, right? And um, mm -hmm. the, also the file name. Uh, and I, 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 would, I would think that this is not um, something that happens really often. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm thinking about okay, what's the alternative? The alternative would be to to change manually. Yeah, but that's no, that that's not possible to change everything by hand. No. What I'm thinking about was uh, what's the alternative to 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 go in all places and and uh, edit the the reference. But yeah, it's too 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 many places. The reference to the. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because no, because that's in all, the thing. In all localized content stuff. Yeah, no. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, and also it's not about how we link to it. It is uh, this is a public um, resource, and yeah, our goal yeah. is for people to use it and link to it, right? Like so, yeah, sure. if we're doing our job well and are successful, at some point a lot of people like you know like we'll start. Yeah. So we should never ever kind of change a link without a redirect because yeah. uh, then we're breaking links and. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. But again, yeah, I think maybe... it's not something that will. I think it's it's got it will probably happen again, but I think it's gonna be very rare. Yeah, yeah. me too. Also, uh, it is really related when we depl uh, when we uh, duplicate terms. Those terms are also still have will have the URL link. So if uh, someone hit uh, the uh, duplicate uh, URL link to duplicate the term, mm. they don't know they, the term is term has been duplicated from our grocery project. So that part also maybe need some redirection or. Uh, one day we need to uh, show the status of uh, document document of each term so that duplicate duplication status can be uh, mm -hmm. notified by other people who already led or who already have compiled the uh, previous links. So uh, yeah, as Catherine and Noah said, uh, this case is not open. Often, so uh, maybe we can discuss it later once we face more complicated situation. But this time, sharing just sharing the status is okay for me. Is there, is there any question or comment regarding on this issue?
okay, I think that there's none and uh okay, Catherine, uh there's just two, two items that I listed. That's all. Yeah. So maybe uh going to the uh, uh localization teams that are here. Um anything, any up to anything you wanna uh to uh tell us about or questions or whatever. I'm just gonna go the round. Edson is the first one on my screen. Uh okay. Um let me open here. Uh related to the uh labeler workflow Sioko that you talked about. This is already working. I, I updated, I think, yesterday the Portuguese branch. So right now we do we do not need to do this manually, right? Or we need to do something. Yeah, actually, uh, I uh, I disabled the workflow manually currently. So even though you updated your development branch that will not work yet. Once every localization teams update their development branch, then I will uh, activate the workflow. Okay. The reason why I disabled the workflow is that uh, if any development branch does not have, have some setting parts regarding the uh, uh, label uh, workflow, then uh, they they face will face uh, check failure in every PR. So that's the reason. Okay, got it. Uh, you. Thank you. Just one more question, Catherine. Uh, there is a list with the deprecated tags and definitions, but I can access when I click, I need to request access. Oh, okay. It it on... maybe like, yeah, I'll, I'll make it available to everyone. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. That's all I think from my from my okay. side. Uh, just just one more thing. Uh, today, with help of Sioko, we merged some terms uh, that was uh, done. But uh, this week, I will review all of the updates. There are a lot of changes, so I will need to. I will open some issues for the Portuguese team because we need to update tags to check the deprecated definitions. And yeah, so there are a lot of work to do besides just localize the ter terms. Yeah, that's all. It's always a lot of work. Ah, it never ends. <laughs> um, MD, anything uh, from on your side that you would like to share? Or Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so uh, as uh, I mentioned, actually, so I also don't have the access to those links, actually, so I tried about yeah. the tags and other ones, so uh, like that. And also, uh, we had 10 terms already actually uh, localized or already done, actually, but uh, right now we have uh, almost 24 done, so I'm hoping to actually uh, up, uh, keep, uh, make it kind of uh, upload to the main branch actually. So what should I do or uh, do I need to wait or something like that or create a PR immediately or something. I was waiting for that. We have almost done 24 or 25. Have you got my point? That is probably all at once, right? Like, um... yeah. yeah, I guess you could just open a PR to main, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, uh, just I was asking the question because is there any other kind of thing I had to go through because uh, as Tioko was mentioning about some changes they uh, need to or uh, rebasing or something like that. So I was waiting for that. So that was my question. Or should I go for rebasing or I have to wait for some changes and then go for the PR or I can create a PR right now? Yeah, I think you'd better to uh rebase your uh, development your team's development branch first okay, and the main, right? if, yeah if you rebase the the development branch you will see some changes from uh, english document english terms if you uh, your team already translated or localized the english terms then you develop to check uh uh, the original English 
uh, document has been changed. If changed, you can apply to those 24 terms. And then you you can uh, open the new PR to merge your development branch to main branch. Okay, great, great. Okay, okay thank you. If you have any uh, question or need any support, then just call me in any way. <laughs> yes, sure. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Walid, anything on your end that you would like to share? Hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Walid there from Pakistan working on DevUR branch development for Urdu. And I'm actually finally a student. My I haven't done my intro last. Uh, I think last month. Yeah, I missed the glossary meeting last month due to illness and wasn't able to attend. So this is my intro. Basically, I am from uh, Pakistan, working working as a uh, student, uh, GoLang developer, also the glossary localization approver. So yeah, working on uh, actually working on some stuff in uh, vocabulary for Urdu, technical vocabulary for Urdu. Uh, basically, the technical vocabulary was missing be because of some word like scalability and uh, uh, some uh, more that like, like API gateway was missing in Urdu. So we are currently working on that, and we'll update soon this month. Also, you know, she had exams this uh, month, so couldn't be able to work on. Uh, uh, more uh, terms, but mm -hmm. we'll we'll be able to inshallah this we uh, this month, and yeah, hope for good. Awesome, yeah. University university always goes first, so that's that's for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, but but it's it's actually uh, our last semester, so we are free, almost free. From awesome, this. cool. Well, welcome. For sure. And uh, yeah, we're all very excited to see the new Ordo effort um, um, Thank you so much. join. And uh, last but not least, Victor, anything on your end? Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah, actually, for some reason, my last minute not showing. Um, I'm still uh, just going around and find what I, where I can contribute for the localization. Um, my native uh, tongue is uh, Mandarin Chinese. Um, so I I'm actually started to offer to help the planning skill DB there have a Chinese documentation I'm helping there. Um, so I probably cannot spend I probably it, it cannot spend that much time also probably not qualified to do the the, the localization just um, so is there any like just random help in there that's I, I see helper there's a, there's a role called helper. I guess that's for more like uh, you know helping with the slack and technical help, not not language help, right? Um, so you you are looking to contribute for like for the regular glossary, you mean like the English? Yeah, basically just in the community, any any project or, uh, that needs like uh, localizations uh, mm -hmm. help. Um, yeah, so 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 some just the like short term, some. Uh, either uh, review or, or, or translate something. Um, yeah. So what, what what type of role is that? Uh, is there such a role uh, in the community that's needed? Well, for a localization team, I, they're kind of every team works, has their own little flow. So I'm not sure if there is like anything uh, there, but like for like on the English glossary, I mean, there are a lot of issues that are open. It generally, it's like working on issues, uh, like uh, working on terms or, um, and yeah, like if there are any questions on Slack, uh, it's always great to see the community kind of help and and answer those as well. But uh, they're not, to be honest. I mean, if you're on the Slack, it's not like there are like tons of questions. So oh, okay. anything, Noah, Jihoon, Seoko, anything you can think of? Yeah, no, I was just um, asking myself, uh, where did you see this helper role? Um, and uh, respectively, did you um, did you uh, read the contributor letter, for example, or the, I mean, th there you can pretty much see how, how, um, how you would uh, enter the, the okay. um, 
the different paths. I mean, yeah. So if you want to become a contributor, it's pretty, uh, pretty much stated there what what is expected and how you how you can climb up the ladder if you want. Um, so yeah, that's my comment on this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For now, I'm just helping a, a particular project with that translation. So. Uh, I guess I'll just keep on doing that. Another question is, uh, there's one term I like for, it's, it's a, just a, like software as service. I know the translation was not quite right. However, it's already been translated a long time ago. So it's already kind of established. So, so for a situation like that, the, the actual translation can have a better choice. Uh, it, it's not that community. It's, it's just the, you know it's probably translated a long time ago by some somewhere else. Um, for a situation like that, does the CNCF terminology that is, is there like a need to change that? Uh, um, so basically, the software as service uh, translated into Chinese is actually software is service. That's the current translation. Um, so, but it's already kind of established as the the term to be used for that for that. English term. So I don't know, did I make that clear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think what you're saying is that it's like there is an established Chinese form of saying it and then it's translated like it's it's local it's translated differently, not like the established way, right? So it should be different. The the the, the current way to translate is it's, it's translated before probably the CNCF project even exists. Uh, that that term uh, can be can have a better translation. Um, so for a translation like that, should we, uh, for for CNCF perspective, should we make corrections to, so it's a, it's a, have so, a better translation? Or so software as a service, I think, is one that was deprecated anyways, um, and it's not. It cannot be that old because the glossary is not even a year and a half old. So, and yeah, so that. It, it, and to to which to which term are you refer, referring? So yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm using that as, as an example. It's just uh, it, it's it, I, yeah for CNCF that's probably uh, a new term, but for that that term itself has been there for forever, right? So that was translated in a way that was not quite. It, it means software okay. is okay. is a service, not a, you know okay. like a. And, and your your question is if if we should uh, if we should define this term in Chinese language to kind of correct this. Uh, yeah, so that's a dilemma. Or... If we translate yeah. it to be, quote, correct, it will be different from what is commonly used in the industry at this point. So uh, yeah, that's the situation. Well, that's the yeah, thing I about localization, that... right? Localization is not translation. <laughs> so like translation would be literally taking the words and then translating them into your language. But if there is already a standard, like a term, established term in Chinese, you're not gonna make up, you shouldn't be making up a new term, right? So it may be that at some point, someone didn't know that established term and simply translated it just because they weren't familiar with it. And then yes, we should definitely keep established terms uh, because, yeah, we don't want to introduce new different variations of it. We should definitely stick to what the industry is, uh, yeah, is, is referring okay. to, to that term. Um, Got it. Yeah. But yeah, as I, I mentioned, agree on I that. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I agree on that. Um, but I guess that is something that, um, that you could discuss in the Chinese exactly. localization team. So. Yeah, that's like something that's definitely that I would, it's like not a discussion with the, because like we cannot say anything about it. You know, you tell us this is like, like sure, you tell us, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, we're, we're, we'll, we will believe you anything you say about Chinese. Because, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I think I would start with uh, raising that discussion there and say like, yeah, um, it, it's a, the actual term is this, it's established. Maybe you can show some links where it's like, you know, like, and then, and then update it. Okay. Yeah, I already brought it up. I, I, yeah, I think um, you're, you're right. I, you probably should stick to the established term, even if it's not the perfect translation. Yeah, you know, if it's established, that's what people go with. So otherwise, everyone is kind of putting their own little version, and then we have to, that, that will be crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Anything else from anyone? 
because if not, I think there are like a few things that uh, we wanted to discuss that were more like uh, within uh, the, well, kind of questions that we as maintainers had that we're going to discuss now uh, may or may not be super relevant <laughs> to you. So you're uh, welcome to stick around or uh, just like, I know it's late for some of you. Um, so um, yeah, we'll just continue with that and um, yeah. So, okay, so we just discussed the, uh, Code, uh, markdown thing uh, and then like uh, data center so I just noticed wow well first of all like typical problem people always do that the problem addresses and people start talking about the solution like we did it so many times and then I got it here too again like people start talking about the solution so we need to change that um, and then uh, of course that was a little bit in the how it addresses uh, how how it helps sorry and one thing that I realized that it was very much focused on the cloud, and yet clouds are data centers. But what is the problem that a data center actually addresses? It's not necessarily not having that infrastructure, because if you have your own infrastructure as a company, you still own it, you still have the whole, that's, that, that's the benefit of the cloud, right? So... Is it that you can connect them into a distributed system? You know, like you have all of them, you have you can do like basically like a supercomputer. Uh, like what is, I, I didn't know what, distributed system is the only thing that kind of came to my mind. But those could also um, be connected through the cloud. But yeah, but like, yeah, I don't know. Is is the question what problem a data center solves in general or comparing yeah. compared to, compared to a cloud computing center? No, no, it's just data center. So it has nothing, it can be a cloud, you know, it can be a cloud data center or it can be like a, the one in a, in a company. And the definition itself was very much focused on cloud, but like we have a definition for cloud and data center is not equal cloud. So data center should focus on data center in general and not written, not necessarily kind of exclude uh, data centers in a company's own kind of part of a company's own infrastructure. Yeah, so in uh, uh, data center in general, I think problem the data center address is just uh, centralized management of uh, computing infrastructure, also data. If yeah, they I was, are, I was, if the, yeah. Yes, no. Yeah, I, I was asking myself, okay, if, if, if we ask the question, okay, what problem solves, what, what problem does the data center solve, then I, I would have to think of what has been before data centers. Uh, and I don't have an answer to this. I mean, it's like localized computing power, right? Everyone works on, on his own machine or yeah. what? I, I don't know. So, well, that then it would be what I was like thinking, right? Like you have several okay. computers, you all, you all, you connect them all, and then you basically have a super, like you have a much bigger capacity because they're all connected instead of having your own, you have a lot more power. You can connect your individual yeah. personal computers to that, like, uh, and then you suddenly, like, you can do things that are much more powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's about power and, like, capacity and speed and okay, computational power, pro probably. I don't know. Yeah, because like I think what was before was probably like what like with the problem it addresses, I like to think about like, okay, what did a world look like before there was that, right? And as you mentioned, that's pretty old, right? Yeah. So <laughs> probably it was people with their personal computers, yeah. right? Like you had like different yeah. stations with their own computers that were not connected. So the maximum like yeah, so that's the maximum you could do with was the power of that person that individual computer, and that's very limited. Because yeah. it has limited yeah. resources, right? Okay. Yeah, if we say that, then it's it's 
it's the the power thing the power computational yeah. power i guess and then the next step is like okay then doing that in the cloud right so you have the personal computer and then you have the data center at the company and then the next evolution is okay now you have actually clouds where you don't even need it in your own infrastructure you can just rent it that's kind of the evolution right um Okay, and then uh, microservice. So for everyone who's else here, so we're changing microservices to microservices architecture, and uh, the services definition will become like like the microservice. Like where we have to update that as well. Um, and so I did uh, send something in Slack. So uh, so it is microservices architecture, which is kind of weird, but microservices is generally kind of used in as a plural. So if you see wow. like, okay, yeah. that's weird. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. There is depends on vendors. They they define mm. differently, but I think yeah, you, I've most, always. Most as, of, hmm? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most of cloud service providers say microservices architecture. Yeah. Mm, crazy. <laughs> okay. It's always plural. I mean, it's uh, microservice is also kind of used in singular, but very rarely. And it, it, the weird thing is it's like a microservices architecture. So it's, it is singular. <laughs> yeah. Because the architecture, that one architecture is made up of multiple services, I guess, right? So uh, it is weird. Um, okay, yeah, and the last, it is yeah. just to check. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the last thing, um, I know this is not super important. <laughs> oh, but didn't, um, don't we have now draft is true, that kind of thing now? I saw uh, Chris Abraham doing, because like the feedback appreciated is, I don't know, I think that's kind of odd. It's very like draft and public, like that, that is yeah, like much more, uh, but is, is, is there a way to kind of bulk change these things if we want to? It's not, again, it's not super important, but like, it's just odd. <laughs> it's like... And the question is, do we need that if we have the um, the other part, um, the new section when it says like draft true and not like, I don't remember what that was about. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah can, can we not just have an or um, conjunction to say either feedback appreciated or draft? Is it not something like that? Actually, well, like appreciated uh, means it's a draft. Yeah, yeah. I, I meant there's some there's some place in the Hugo uh, thing in order to show it or not, but it checks. It just checks checks for completed, right? So only those who are completed are shown in the Hugo in the templating um, stuff. I think so. Yeah. So does it even? Is it even a difference what we write for if we write draft or feedback appreciated? Don't shows up anyway, right? Yeah, I th I think if it is shown or not now is differently. It's not completed anymore. It is uh, if it does not have the draft true thing. That's a new thing. Oh, okay. Chris, okay. I think. Uh, do you remember the, he just did yeah. a PR like recently? Yeah, I, I I remember the draft true header uh, is for the category of tags only the one usage. So previously, if we don't have that uh, header draft to true header, then uh, uh, even though we duplicate or change the status of a term to not completed status, the uh, category, tag category count duplicated terms as well. 
So that's the reason why Chris added more uh, draft true tag so that uh, those, uh, those terms which she does not uh, uh, in completed status uh, counted for uh, counted for the tags category. Oh, because that kind of messed it up. Like yeah, adding. it is. Okay, so is our uh, terms published based on that draft not true not being true now and not the completed or is it looking at both i i think uh, recently uh or uh or uh, terms which she has uh, uh which have status not completed mm -hmm. uh, Chris added uh, oh. those terms to uh, the draft header as well. And, and okay, you changed that. Through. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then Chris, we basically don't need that anymore because it's 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 draft true or em like is it empty or no false? I guess right. Like so, it would be uh, there would only be instead of that, but I didn't see that anymore. Or is it just the ones that are not completed? Yes, uh, we uh, didn't apply the draft header to all terms. We only applied draft true to duplicated or PDP appreciated terms. Oh, okay. So does that mean that we don't need the status anymore if we have this header thing? No, uh, draft here is used only for counting number of tags for category. Not the, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. not for the uh, glossary term status. So yeah, actually, uh, it should be automated and not specifying both things. I think that would be ideal to for that to be to get rid of the status and just say like draft, yeah. yes, uh, true, yeah. false. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because then it's like simple and it's, it, and it makes very, it's very, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like the feedback appreciated is very weird. So yeah, could, is there a way to bulk apply that? <laughs> Pardon, bulk? To make it like at one, like not going, not doing it individually, but doing it all at once. The changes to all those who have completed, change them to. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but it is web development issue. Oh, so, so that's Chris, Chris can, question. Yeah, handle, but uh, the draft true, true uh, option uh, is, was invited by Chris, but. Uh, maybe it is very uh, initial effort to quickly remove, I mean, uh, quickly apply the counting tags issue. Yeah, well, I can, we can ask him. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's not like super urgent, but I feel like like it's more intuitive and terms that people like it, yeah it's just more intuitive like the, the feedback appreciated and completed is not really uh the way these things are expressed um okay let's see what he says and if you put it on his um to-do list at the end like somewhere in the future that's fine um anything else anyone uh, just just one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. I was checking here that 
why do we need to do with the deprecated terms? We need to put the status as deprecated or just remove? Uh, well, we don't want to delete them. Yeah, yeah. That, of, like, yeah. So that's... it's a little bit of, yeah. So the glossary started and people starting kind of to, uh, to so, uh, what's it called, contribute terms. And we didn't have like a real process to evaluate to the, and then start, we started getting all these terms that are not really cloud native terms. So we feel very sorry because a lot of people put effort in it. You put effort in it, uh, localizing it, right? But someone input. And so it is like, we, we do feel a little bit bad about it, but we didn't have a process to, like it is a cloud native glossary. So it should be cloud native yeah. and not have non cloud native terms. Um, so we, do you want to keep them still there just in case i don't know just deleting them is like yeah we did yeah, not want yeah. to do that. is it part um, of the process to to construct to to create the glossary right so yeah, yeah yeah and just fyi so we do have terms that are not necessarily cloud native so uh like we have the foundational uh ta um, tag and terms that we believe are necessary to understand cloud native terms like data center, right? If you talk about the cloud, if someone is learning, that is kind of the basis to understand what a cloud is. So those we do keep and they only have a, a foundation, um, foundational tag. Uh, but if they're like debugging, for instance, is like there is no need to know, understand debugging to understand cloud native terms. And it has nothing, it's nothing specific to cloud. So just for you to kind of understand our logic and yes it was a hard decision and we really feel sorry for you guys that actually put all the effort as well in localizing them but yeah um yeah, yeah my, some question just don't. More, my question yeah. is more because i saw here for example managed services uh we have the status deprecated so this will be the process to deprecate to deprecate some yeah these terms, right? Because I will open a PR to update the tags and see the deprecated terms, so yeah. I think like right now, I don't know if probably, I don't know how it will uh, affect our, because uh, if we have like the draft true or false and not status anymore, uh well stat, yeah i don't know we have to figure that out but right now i think if we put deprecated it's not going to show in the glossary so then it's okay, gone okay i think i think at least for now because we have a lot of terms localized and to do not uh do the job i will just update the tags and i will wait or i will wait for some agreement about the status or draft through That's yeah, something. so maybe we need to uh, announce terms has been deprecated to localization teams as well, so that uh, localization teams uh, quickly apply the deprecated localized terms. Maybe maintenance should uh, make uh, uh, status of terms. Uh, probably or automated way. What do you mean should we do with the status? Yeah, we uh, sometimes we change uh, status of terms, status life cycle, I mean, like completed to duplicated or something else, feedback appreciated status. But uh, uh, if that term already translate localized then uh, uh, the localization team may not quickly follow the status of term in English duplicated term so maybe uh, maintainers need to find a way to make uh, status changes information publicly to localization teams who are uh, in public as well. Maybe we need to show uh, 
uh, the status of terms in uh, glossary website. On the website, there would only be. Yeah, there is just one um, yeah. description, right? But mm -hmm. we don't show the status of the term. No. Yeah, currently, all terms uh, opened publicly in glossary is completed status. But we sometimes change. People uh, will not know why or when the term has been duplicated from yeah. uh, our glossary. I think something that we can do is like, and we should probably do, I mean, in the list with the tags, we have also list the ones that are deprecated, is, but generally kind of say like, hey, we deprecated this term, like put it in the glossary and this meeting and then kind of have like a, um, you just, just communicate it better. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, some terms are take us feedback appreciated, but those feedback appreciate mm -hmm. we are hard to, maybe contributors hard to find uh, which terms are in feedback appreciated mm -hmm. status so that they can con try to contribute. So uh, if it's very related with other status uh, information in public issue. Well, I know that at some point, a lot of people were localizing terms that were still feedback appreciated. So that's that's what you mean, right? Like that's not mm -hmm. uh, ideal because they're not they're not regarded as ready. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to. I think did we add that in, uh, I think, somewhere in the contributor guide? at some point but i don't know yeah. how to make it more visible because you have like once you go into the term you will see it but like i don't know how to make it more visible without clicking on the term it's just a matter of letting people know no mm -hmm. so it is just an open topic and we need to keep discussing ideas how to uh improve that yeah yeah, show the status to in public or to new contributors or contributors. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's think about how we can do that. Uh, anything else? Okay. Um, okay, good. Then, uh, Noah, let's try to close policy as a as code data center and microservices uh, soonish, and then we can uh, move forward with uh, the next um, things on the to do list. But I think we should be good. Okay, cool. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Happy New Year again. And I will see you very soon. Thank you. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. 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 All right.